There's an odd rule where Medicare Part A is backdated up to six months from when you enroll. This is normally not an issue because most people don't pay a monthly premium for Part A. But if you contribute to a health savings account, Part A backdating can be a big problem. This is the second of our two back-to-back -back videos related to Medicare and health savings accounts. I recommend you watch the first video titled Medicare's Impact on Health Savings Accounts, which will be linked right up here, as well as at the end of the video and in the description below. If you don't contribute to a health savings account, Part A backdating is not a problem. But if you do contribute to a health savings account beyond age 65, you need to be careful when you eventually enroll in Medicare and or Social Security benefits for the first time. And that's because Part A backdating can negatively impact your ability to contribute to an HSA. The earliest Medicare Part A can start is the first of your 65th birthday month or one month sooner if you have a first of the month birthday. But if you enroll in Medicare and or Social Security after you turn 65, Part A is backdated up to six months, and the backdating is based on the month you submit the application for benefits. It's not based on when you want Part B and or Social Security benefits to begin. Let's use our friend Joe as an example to make this clear and mention how Medicare Part A enrollment impacts HSA contributions. In this scenario, Joe's 65th birthday is April 20th. So he's Medicare eligible April 1st. If he submits an application for Medicare and or Social Security in the three months prior to his birthday month, his Part A will start April 1st. So that would be an application submission in either January, February, or March. There's no backdating involved here. As far as HSA contributions go, he can make a contribution for any of the months prior to his birthday month. So that would be for January, February, and March. And since Joe's not enrolled in Medicare during three out of 12 months, he can contribute three-twelfths of the HSA maximum for the year, as well as three-twelfths of catch-up contributions. Now let's make a slight alteration. If Joe signs up for Medicare and or Social Security in his 65th birthday month, or any of the next six months after that, Part A will backdate to the first of his birthday month, so April 1st. Remember, Part A is backdated six months but won't start any earlier than the 65th birthday month. The HSA situation will be no different here as Part A still begins in April, which enables Joe to contribute three-twelfths of the HSA max for the year. Now let's push this out two years into the future when Joe is about to turn 67. If Joe finally decides to sign up for Medicare and or Social Security for the first time, then he will see the full six months worth of Part A backdating. Let's take a look at what happens here. Say Joe wants to begin Medicare Part B and or Social Security benefits in April when he turns 67. So we will have him submit the application in January to give Social Security time to process his application and paperwork. Medicare Part B can have an April start, as well as his Social Security benefits, but Medicare Part A will backdate six months to July of the prior year. Yes, the Part A backdating will be based on the month he submitted the application, January. It does not backdate based on the month his Medicare Part B and Social Security benefits begin, April. What this means is, if Joe maxed out his HSA contributions in the prior year, he has now over-contributed to his HSA for that year. He was really only eligible for 6 twelfths, or one-half, of the HSA max. The months of January through June of the prior tax year were fine, but because Part A was backdated to July, he became ineligible for additional contributions from that point on. And this is why you will often hear or see the statement, Stop contributing to your HSA six months prior to starting Medicare and or Social Security. Well, as you can see, you really should consider stopping about nine months before Medicare and Social Security benefits begin. Important note, there is one scenario where you won't have to accept the six months of Part A backdating. 
And that's only if you or your spouse don't have the necessary 40 Medicare quarters, which means you have to pay a premium for Part A. In that scenario, you can request no backdating. That way you don't have to pay up to six months of very high Part A premiums. If you haven't already watched our first video on Medicare and health savings accounts, then check it out right over here. Thanks for watching.